All right, guys, if you're not a proficient developer and you don't really know JavaScript, CSS, and Liquid, don't really worry because this video is going to walk you through step-by-step -step on how to implement a tabular product description without any prior code experience. I think I've provided enough documentation and references on how to do so. You'll see that there's a full blog along with a GitHub repository that also references the same step-by-step -step guide with links to all the code. All this will be in the below in the description for free, so feel free to check that out. So you'll see this is the final result of what we're trying to do here. So we have a description tab, we have a features tab, and a documents tab. All of these can be populated on the actual product page itself. So you'll see down here on the meta fields, you'll see there's product documentation, product features, and then you can enter the product description information in the standard description field. But these meta fields allow us to add more functionality and flexibility into our Shopify store to render more data to the customer on the front end. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to navigate over to online store, click on themes, and you're going to want to create a copy of the existing theme that you're using on your web store. Um, the reason for this is that if something goes wrong, if we break something as you're following this tutorial, it doesn't really matter because you're not going to be damaging your actual live website. So the first thing you'll do is we'll notice we just created a quick copy. So in order to add those new fields, we have to create meta fields. In this implementation, we added product documentation and product features. So to do so, we're gonna go ahead and navigate to the settings page in Shopify, click on custom data, and then you're gonna to wanna to add two new definitions or however many definitions you wanna add depending on the new tabs you're adding on your product page. Like I said, I added product features and product documentation. Go ahead and click add definition. I'll just show you an example. So you're gonna go up, type in any, whatever the product name is gonna be, the product information name is gonna be. Go ahead, give it a quick description on what this field is. That's really not important unless you wanna be able to reference back in the future to why you added this field. We're just going to say to show documentation, product documentation. And then you're gonna go ahead and select the field type. This field type is dependent on the type of data you're gonna be showing in this meta field and if you're rendering it to the front end or if you're using it in the back end for some other form of uh, process. But in this instance, we're gonna add rich text and you're going to hit save. Do this again to repeat the process for however many tabs you're adding to your front end. So as the blog says, step three, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and copy the product template description, which actually gives us the new tabular functionality and we're gonna copy this HTML liquid. And you'll notice here that we can see that there's some references to the product that description, the product underscore features, and the product underscore documentation. The product description is the default product description that Shopify gives you out the gate. And then we're working with the two newly added meta fields, and these names will vary dependent on what you name them. So make sure it matches what that meta field is named in your Shopify settings. Otherwise, this data will not render to the front end. So go ahead, copy that code, go back to your um, go back to your theme editor, and you're gonna to wanna to find on the main dash product dot liquid, you're gonna to wanna to find this description section. So to do that, you can just do a quick control F and you're gonna to wanna to type in product dot description. And there will be a few instances of this showing up in the code itself, but you wanna find where it would make sense. So you can see here above, you got like the inventory section, you've got where it's gonna be saying low stock. So that's in this area here. So that's how you're able to troubleshoot, not troubleshoot, but locate exactly where you wanna be embedding this. Another quick trick is you can do a right click inspect and see where it resides here. Um, but if, like I said, if you guys have issues on locating exactly where to add this code, feel free to drop it below in the comments and I can help you out. But in between this liquid, this if when description and the end if, this is what actually renders the code if product description is not blank it's going to be rendering the description code so you'll see here this is where we want to paste that code from our blog and this is going to give us the tabular functionality so go ahead and paste that there hit save now if we go back to the product page you'll notice right now there's no tabs but if we hit refresh you'll see now i don't know why it crashed like that it was just probably the internet but um you'll see here that we have these three different tabs that we just added, but obviously there's no formatting and there's no functionality of switching the tabs. So the next thing we wanna do is add the actual CSS to make it a little bit more beautiful. And that's why I added this underneath the assets. I added a product-description.css. You can name this anything you want, but when you add that CSS file, make sure you're also adding it to your main theme.liquid because you have to bring in that reference to that style sheet, otherwise it won't show any CSS on your page. So you're gonna go ahead and type in product.description.css product or whatever you named your CSS file. Go back, 
make sure you hit save, go back to the blog, scroll down to the add CSS section. And we're going to add the CSS. We're kind of skipping around a little bit in the blog, um, but this is just because it's a little bit easier to see um, how the tabular functionality works once we add that JavaScript that's going to enable the actual tab switching. Go back to here, go in your theme editor, go to that product-description.css, save that CSS styling. If you want to learn more about like you know how we're actually going about styling it, we'll have some videos in the future talking about how to use CSS and how to use JavaScript and how to use Liquid and all these other things that are really awesome to learn about. But you'll notice we now added some nice styling, just very simplistic modern styling to this um, tabular description we created but right now when you click features and documents you'll notice that nothing happens but the URL on the top is getting changed in order to make it work we need to add JavaScript so go back to the blog copy the script tag go back to your editor go back to the main dash product dot liquid and now right below that closing div tag for the new tabular content that we added go ahead and just paste that script make sure it's wrapped in a script opening and closing tag and make sure that script opening and closing tag syntax is correct. Otherwise, you will have some issues. So go ahead and hit save. And you will see here, if you go back to that page and hit refresh on your product page and you click the tabs. Let's just load for a second. Now when we go back to that now when we go back to the product page and we hit the tabs, you'll notice that there's some test data that is displaying over here and it is working as desired. So that's pretty much it for how to add a tabular product description. There's going to be some more functionality I want to add here just to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, but that's going to give you the main functionality. In this instance, I want to make it so it's a little bit more zoomed out. You'll notice on the final result, it's zoomed out more with this left pane and the right pane looking better. So if you want to see how to do that, stay tuned to the rest of the video if not definitely drop off here go ahead comment below i hope this was helpful and i hope this blog walked you through the steps on how to implement a tabular product description and here's the final result so this part of the video is certainly more preference based but to me i think it would look a lot better if we zoomed out this page so the left uh, product image section is a little bit smaller and the right product image information section is a little bit larger just because you can really emphasize these new tabular description information sections and this is going to be the final result here that I'm looking for so in order to do that you can right inspect your product page and you can see what CSS is driving the construction of the web page in this instance it's on the section dot main dash main dash product dot CSS and you can find that um, where that's located by clicking the actual div and then you can scroll down and see what CSS is driving it and you will be able to find that actual file specifically and then modify it in your back end. So now that we know where that is, we're going to change this media query just so it's a little bit more sensitive to 1200 PX or not sensitive but just more uh, working on the responsive level that we would like in this instance and we're going to change this which is the right product information section or the left product media wrapper uh, to 30%, which is the product images. And then we're going to change the product information to 70%, just making that new tabular section a lot larger. Go ahead and hit save. This is really based on preference and how you want your site to look. But like I said, I think this looks a lot better. Hit refresh. And you'll notice now that it's giving more emphasis on the tabular product description section, and it's giving less emphasis on the image, but it still has that clickable image functionality so you can see it. And um, that to me looks a lot better. I hope you guys found this video helpful and insightful. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop below in a comment section. We do have a full GitHub repository, like I said, that has all this code along with a reiteration of how to implement it and the README. And on our blog on shillatech.com, you can find all this information. You can also find a bunch of other blogs about microcontrollers, about technology. And I really strongly recommend going to Shillatech if you are interested in technology and broadening your knowledge in different industries. So definitely go ahead and check that out. Drop a sub and comment below if you guys have any questions. Godspeed and thanks for tuning in. See you guys next time.